Welcome to the Operation Move podcast. My name is Zoe and this time I've got a bit of a bonus episode which is part one of two which I recorded with Kirsten after our yoga retreat. We're in the car so I had to use some tools to clean up the audio so hopefully it is not too annoying but um, it at least got most of the rumbling out of there I think. How are you feeling? Relaxed? Feeling, feeling very relaxed. Very uh, reluctant <laughs> to go back. <laughs> reluctant to go back to uh, life as we know it, I have to say. Yes. It's like you have that. Oh, well, I guess if you, not if you don't work Monday to Friday, but if you do work Monday to Friday, you get that like the Sunday depression. A kick, little bit. Kicks in. Yeah. And it's probably even worse. Even though we don't need to go to work on Monday. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it's a special Monday tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, it does. It feels it feels like you're just not sure I'm able to fend for myself, really. <laughs> Might have to make food and I think am for myself. Looking, I am looking forward to hydro real coffee. Oh, yes, we'll get one of those tomorrow. <laughs> um, you know, like I, I can get by on instant but i could definitely feel like a slight caffeine <laughs> scenario <laughs> oh yeah but it has been a beautiful week it has been there's a pretty much the similar to the last one that very, you went on yeah very similar um a few different activities that we did last time uh, like a guitar and chanting uh, workshop last time and there was a bit more um active yoga rather than the restful restorative stuff that we've been doing this weekend. Lots of we've had lots of lying down. I'm uh, glad that which is fantastic. I'm glad we're doing the lying down yeah. yoga. That's my favourite type. But today we were obviously doing some active yeah. stuff to get us back yeah. into the real world. I was like, oh disappointing. Disappointing <laughs> <laughs> Warrior post yeah. to disappointing. Yeah. yeah. Um no, so, it, was, um, yeah. it was lovely though when we did seven sessions, I think, didn't we? We did four yesterday, one on Friday night, and then two. Yeah. So, yeah. Packed it in. Yeah. It's good. Well, we had to. We had to work up and have to. <laughs> for all, for all the food. 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 Yeah. Don't need to eat a vegetable now for at least a week, surely. <laughs> it's like, based on my nutrition course, they're like, as long as you eat it for the week. Oh, so I, I was like, like that. what do yeah. you do on a, little... a specific day? And I was like, right, well, I'm probably good for two weeks We've stacked it. We've stacked it in our favour. Um, so, yeah, that is, that is. Slide back into normal. Excellent. I do, yeah, I don't know, I think it was also really nice doing it, like, pre-Christmas. Very restful, you just know, just a nice and it breaks before Christmas. Just, lovely. yeah, like when, and you're not sort of like going back, like bitly going back to work, but kids are still at school for a few more days, so you can still sort of like get some ducks in a row, potentially, very, like I've got, uh, I'm trying very hard not to think about Tuesday, but um, there's a potential that I'm going to have to, like, drive to, to and from, like, the work farm to Lisbon for, like, mm-hmm. a car servicing scenario because okay. he's got to, like, be down there to take the car, but then he's got to be back um, for when the horses are getting their feet checked. Oh, right. So if the car servicing isn't complete by, like, 11.30, then I'm going to have to, like, do some driving and yeah. catch up on like a couple of days worth of work and also like get Riley off to school early for her dream world thing and have like Arlo's graduation dinner. Yeah. So I'm feeling a little stressed but also thinking that's like that's definitely future Zoe's yeah. problem. And um I have some time at the airport tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So I could Check, start checking a few emails. Yeah. And just try and get my address. Just send out some stuff, you know. Luckily, like, it's very few things can happen on the weekend. 
<laughs> so it's only like the fright. Oh, yes, we've just we're we're driving at the minute and half we, the bridge is missing. <laughs> uh, just enjoying the state of the roads. 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 Excellent. After all the rain we've had. So, yeah, did you come come away with any sort of like thoughts about anything that you wanted to sort of like look at next year in terms of changing something like rest? I need to look after myself better. I need to prioritise myself and my own, like all aspects of my health. (laughs) You know, just do a blanket everything um, better. I just, yeah, I've really neglected myself in the last 12 months and been putting everybody else and everything else first. Um, and I paid the price for it well and truly um, with a healthy dose of burnout and exhaustion. Um, and I think it's, yeah, things, weekends like this really just remind me of, I guess, like it's lovely to be looked after so beautifully, but it also reminds me of how little attention I pay to looking after myself. Yeah. Um, and and it's just a, you know, part, maybe some, some of it's conditioning, maybe some of it's, a, you know, side effect of what's been happening, you know, for the last three years. Um, but, um, yeah, it's sort of, um, yeah, it's a, uh, a reminder that, um, that's, you know, you could just pay a little bit of attention to, Maybe just the type of food that you eat, or you know, or even or just sitting down into your meal and sitting down and not having a phone or the computer or you know whatever nearby. Actually, I just the last time I connect. sat down for a meal. Yeah, or really, you know, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like I too usually like shoveling something down the hole in the kitchen. Yeah, like that's standing at the bench. You know, because I'm kind of like cooking up and eat something, and sometimes yeah, I will sit down but a lot of times it'd be like oh I'll just take this into the office and I'll eat this and when I'm at work I don't I don't take a lunch break no. at work and um, I might I will eat my lunch and I'm getting better at eating my lunch at a lunch appropriate time um, and um, but um, yeah I guess you know trying to remember that food, food isn't just Fuel. It is also something that nourishes your soul, and your mind, and all the rest of it as well. And I think, like, yeah, spending the week with Joe as well in New Zealand, and she looked after me just so beautifully. I was actually concerned for my capacity to do anything for myself when I got home, <laughs> um, which was just exactly what I needed. And it was so generous of her with her time and her energy. But it just, you know, reminds you, I guess, to look at it through other people's eyes and to think that you are actually worth nurturing and you are actually worth looking after because we just deprioritise ourselves. So, well, I know I do. Um, Because that's the person person that you can get the most leeway from. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm very forgiving of myself (laughs) for (laughs) taking shortcuts and cutting corners and neglecting certain aspects of my life and, um, and, yeah, I think some of the things that nourish us the most, not just in terms of food, but rest and the type of rest that you get, you know, um, don't give it enough credit, don't give it enough airspace. Even just like going to sleep in a room that's not drowning in laundry, (laughs) you know, for example. clean and tidy space, a minimalist, you know, without clutter and without (laughs) my chair drobe and, you know, things like that, um, about the dog sleeping on the end of the bed, just having a really nice, clean, mentally and physically clean, hygienic place to sleep is, you know, it's been really lovely, I have to say. So, yeah, it's um, lots of takeaways, but uh, without the pressure of you could do better, you know. Yeah. It's just little things that I would like to work towards. Yeah, yeah it's a, like it's a good reminder, like, like doing like particularly you know like our evening yoga our more sleep time yoga Mm. and you know it just reminds me like I used to do this for myself like most nights 
you know, like before bed. And it's not as nice because you don't have, like, somebody doing, like, the full sort of, like, guided thing and, yep. you know, um, and you're not, like, in a space like that, all the rest of it. But it's still, like, a vast improvement on, like, you know, I don't know, like, shoving half a donut down my gob uh, while sort of, like, <laughs> scrolling <laughs> and then go, oh, yeah. shit. Where the donut go? <laughs> 10, 10.30, I'm going to go to bed now. Yep. Um, and, like, having let go of a lot of that sort of, like, yeah. sleep hygiene, like, yeah. even aside from yoga, just, like, having that thing of, like, you know, that wind down, like, stepping away from screen. Yes. You know, getting ready for the next Doing day. Doing meditation. Yeah, just getting, like getting your stuff ready if you're going to go and exercise in the morning, if you're going to go for a run, go to the gym. Maybe, you know, just sort of like rolling out, you know, like you saw sort of things. Or, yeah. You know, like just, and you just sort of like, because those things get like chipped away bit by bit by bit, you kind of don't notice it. And then, yeah. like, you go to something like that and you're like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. And, um, yeah, it sort of stacks on self-care on a weekend like that. Yeah. It doesn't have to look like that all the time, but you can take elements of it into your life and little snippets that remind you of that, you know, that um, that time and that space. And like Mel was saying a lot over the weekend, yoga teacher was saying, you know, just to remember what that feels like and remember what, you know, let's just remind your body what that feels like and... Um, and yeah, like you just you don't have to have the whole show. But you yeah. can have little pieces of it and it will still you know, be just as um, it'll still have benefit. Don't want to go it's to Melbourne? A, well I would like to go to Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a I feel, had a crossroads moment. Yeah, do we go to Melbourne or do we go to Goulburn? Um, <laughs> they sound so similar, it's <laughs> easy to get confused. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think I'm in trouble. Um, I've got to go to an assembly at 9.30. See my smarty pants daughter get an award. <laughs> no, it's, um, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, um, there's lots to take away. It's just such a, um, you can be with complete strangers, and, you know, apart from knowing me this weekend. So yeah. we were with, you know, virtual strangers and whatnot, but it can still be a really nurturing Love, you know, kind of, it's a really, um, a really nice space to be in. Um, so yeah, it's um, and you can always find like common ground with with people, you know. Like it's not, yeah. it's not hard, you know. Like there's all the sort of like shared experience, particularly among a group of women. You know? Yeah, we've got a lot of. There's a lot of common threads. Yeah, like you don't have to look very far to. To find some commonality. So yeah, it, and I think it's also one of those things where it, um, like forever. I don't know how long COVID situation is going. Three years now, maybe three years. Three years. Yeah. Uh, and you just have all of these, like or like ordinarily, we have all of these like little infill, like even. Mm-hmm. It's not like a yoga retreat, like going away for... Oh, the, the little running days. things. It's and, all running, yeah. maybe not running, but maybe just like going and doing something. Yep. And, and then and it's it sort of, you just have that and it just makes everything that bit easier because you have that little bit of time away. Yep. You're not cooking and, you know, like you're not having to worry about something else 24-7. And, yep. You know, like you're all sort of like outside a lot more and you know like just sort of like doing what you want to do yeah. and you don't really think about it when you don't do that for three years but yeah. it has like a confounding it does effect. it does absolutely and you know we've this year has been crazy fast and crazy busy like it's just it's just mind-blowing that it is you know two weeks till december till, till christmas and i feel like I'm sure it was January when I was saying, oh, let's not, you know, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves or anything <laughs> like that, you know, let's just take it easy. But it's been a whirlwind of a year on the back of two years of trauma. 
Yeah. For most of us, you know, COVID has affected everybody in a different way, but it has affected everybody in some way. Um, and we've brought that fatigue into what has turned into being an absolutely frantic year. Um, and it's, you know, like it's almost, it's, it's, yeah, there's a compounded interest situation. Just uh, if literally everyone you speak to at the moment is absolutely exhausted. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just, um, I think we've tried to move on in some respects. And by moving on, resuming normal life as much as possible, but with almost a sense of urgency to try and make it be normal, Um, you know, uh, as if that could erase some of the trauma from the last few years. But uh, like it can't, it doesn't, you just still have to process that in your own way and in your own time. And, you know, I think we've just. Yeah, it's, um, it's a big, it's been a big year. Yeah. And we've just had everybody in different ways. Yeah. And, you know, we've had floods. We've had, you know, had more COVID. We've had, you know, all sorts of things so happening. So, we were, you know, the schools have embraced getting back into normal, you know, the normal run of things. And so that means you've got all the, I did miss, to miss when we couldn't go. <laughs> so we couldn't go to that assembly oh, and we kept good going times. to that, that performance. Good, and, good times. You know, but now it's all back on. It's like, yep, let's get to it. Let's let's bring every last ounce of energy out of every person in the last two weeks. I am glad that this year was my last ever promise fucking book week. <laughs> yes, fucking book week. <laughs> oh, my God, fucking book week. Ugh. So yeah, like I'm, I'm missing a few, um, a few assemblies by this weekend, but that's not my fault. That's the school's fault for only telling me two days beforehand. I'm like, well, it's done now. So give me two I'm, days' notice, and I'm um, yeah. going. And frankly, if they'd given me two weeks' notice, I'm yeah. at least would have changed it. Yeah, but you know, like if I'd had some kind of. Um, like a bit more notice than yeah. I would have like changed a flight or you know something, yeah. but it, I don't have to go. That's okay. No. Josh gets to go. It's still a parent prison. Yeah, and um, and I don't think like um, I think it's probably stuff that Riley already knows. Like, because she came top into a subject, so it's probably related to that. I don't think it would be anything different to that. Um, so yeah, like just. Be, it will be really nice. Um, this year is going to be like the first, um, first year where there's this like really like decent amount of like proper break at the end of the year. Like last year, we attempted it, but then, um, my boss said, like, sorry, I just need you to do like yeah. a little bit of work. And then we made the wrong choice with something to do with, with scheduling the payroll and then I had to make all of these payroll it's so boring but oh. all of these payroll adjustments which are a total nightmare and being new to payroll I had no yeah. idea of what a nightmare it would be yeah. and then you had to, had to sort of like you know like for anyone you'd underpaid no problem it's like so easy to fix you just like you know make the adjustment but when you've overpaid them a lot it's just like such a nightmare yeah, it's like the worst thing. I'm never gonna do put myself in that position again yeah. um so whereas um this year uh, systems are a bit better and you know like I'm sort of I am going to be doing a little bit of work but you know, not not much and just essentially on Monday and just planning on uh where like really like stepping ourselves back from like anything sort of like big for Christmas. Yeah. So like I'm making like maybe like one or two things. My yeah. mum's making maybe one or two things. We've like got sort of like agreements with a lot of family and we're not doing gifts. So the gifts yeah. for the kids, but we don't need gifts. Yeah. Like the the gift is just like spending time with each other and eating nice food. Yes. Yeah, you know, like you don't need anything more than that. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll be like, oh, like 
it's like a festive recipe, but who's eating it? Yeah. You know, like, because I'm not cooking for 20 people anymore. So, you know, it's sort of like when you had like a much bigger family Christmas, it was fine because everyone would have a tiny little bit and it would get eaten. And, and they'll be living with leftovers for five days. And now you've got two kids who definitely won't eat anything fancy. And then you've got basically four adults yeah. who are there on Christmas Day and they're not eating that. Like particularly not, you know, um, 80-year-olds yeah. with really small appetites. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, um, I don't know that I'm looking forward to having a small appetite when I'm 80, I have to say. Um, and... So that then I don't have to like waste all of that good, like annual leave or holiday time on just like recovering from Christmas. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's just sort of like just like keep it really, really simple and then yeah. just have like, you know, hopefully have some like nice weather and like take the paddle board out and like do a yeah. few things with the, with the kids or not or just yeah. like loll about at home. If that, and they will probably enjoy yeah. that just as much too. Yeah. And just so that I can then hopefully, like, go into the next year. Feeling yeah. a little bit more refreshed. With, and, like, feeling yeah. like I have, like, some reserves yeah. in there, which, you know, you still have to, I think that now um, with me sort of, like, going to less uh, running events, just because it's expensive, like, the travel, like, yeah. travel and... Travel has gotten very expensive and has accommodation. Yeah. Like, you know, it's certainly not as cheap as it used to be. And, to, you know, like, to be fair, like, if I'm kind of, like, looking at travel and how I'm going to spend my money, if I spend the money to go to an event, the the downside is those people who I'm going to see at the event, I barely get to see. Yeah. You know, because everyone's sort of like got their sort of like pre-race stuff going on and they've got like all these sort of like competing, you know, uh, things that they need to do like with their family or, you know, like how they've sort of set themselves up. And so if I'm going to spend, you know, a $1,000 on like whatever it is to go away for a weekend, which often like it's, it sounds outlandish to say that, but it's not actually like by the time you have, you know, you spend – Three hundred dollars on flights, three hundred dollars on accommodation, and then I'll probably spend race entry hundred dollars on parking. Yeah, you know, and then you know, like all the food that is absolutely imperative that I eat. I have to, um, and the hates I've got to buy when I'm there because I ignore the fact that they can be ordered online for my own. You have to pay for postage. You've got to reduce your carbon footprint. Sorry, um, and I would rather like spend that money to like go do something like we did yeah. where you you know like you're going away but it's not there's not all of these logistics like there are with like running and thing even if you've got there's no mental stress involved yeah so like, you know oh well i have to you know god i hope i go to the toilet before i go for my run my marathon and i've got to run you know, eat I've like have my this, gels and i've got to eat this much food and i've got to yeah eat this exact thing and then i'm going to recover from that thing yeah, you know, that running event and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like next year, it's a lot less stressful. It's much more likely to go, oh, let's like go for, away for a week and go for a hike. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. or a run or whatever. Yeah. But, but just but have a, do you, be, be doing your own thing, yeah. not necessarily going to an organised event. No. Um, because then also when you do it with, every, you know, at an organised event, you do it with everybody else. And sometimes, you know, the, the social thing is, is nice, but you can, you know, like, Take, for example, something like UTA. You're sharing Katoomba with thousands of other people. And Katoomba is busy enough at the best of times, but, you know, it's, um, yeah, like you could do that a few weeks before or whatever. You could do it at a different time of year. And, and I think it's just making it a priority when there's not a race attached to it, which is the difficulty because, you know, there's sort of, it's less set in stone and, yeah, and all that sort of stuff. It's and I, sort of harder, and I, yeah. If you need to justify it, it's harder when it's just a, a casual weekend of social, you know. Yeah, and in the past, I've always gone like, oh, this isn't work based. Like, I'm going away from work. <laughs> this is my job. This is my job. And now I'm like, no, I'm just like, I'm just going to go away and I'm going to do 
it's like it's lots of yoga and I'm going to have people feed me. But I think that like in like your mind, there's this sort of like this sense of sort of like guilt when you're doing something that is like just for you, but it only exists in your mind. It certainly doesn't exist in Josh's mind. Like it was like, there's a slag <laughs> basically shook me as I was leaving. It's like, rest. Yeah. Rest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was beautiful because like, you know, there was things to know, internet connection. Mm-hmm. So yeah. while you could send and receive a text message, you certainly couldn't check your emails or, you know, get on the book or the ground uh, or whatever and do things like that. So, you know, like it was, um, it was sort of a, it was a rest in more ways than one. And, um, and just, it's just such valuable time. It's my new favourite thing to do, I think, like, is to go away and just actually rest. And instead of, like, I used to look at these running events as that was my time to decompress or, you know, that was my rest, but I had to run a 50K to earn my rest or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> it's counterintuitive. Like, and I thought at the time it was rest. And, yes, it's time away from, from you know, my everyday life. But it's, it, you know, it was exhausting. And right. you'd come back and you'd probably, you know, you couldn't walk properly for a few days or you had terrible sunburn or, you you know, well, any number of things that you have to recover from afterwards. And you would just slide straight back into yeah. family life or, like, you know, like, work life or yeah. whatever. The day after I ran one of the uh, Melbourne marathons, I had to drive both of my children who were at the time like six, three thousand kilometers off. And on my own. That's silly. That's just awesome. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, I did not. That's like, shit. well, yeah. actually what happened was is I was going to like, get home from that and then the next day go and then I got home and I was like that, that's a mistake so I stayed at home yeah. like an extra day and yeah. then like drove them um and thankfully then that all went smoothly but I've never like driven that much like yeah. like such a long stint on my own before yeah. um with small kids yeah exhausting. and when you're tired from just had just way. had to sort of like stop regularly and like just like yeah. get out into the fresh air you know like that kind of thing and they're like what are we doing and like, I'm like I'm just having a breather just yeah. stay in the car yeah um so yeah like you just don't necessarily and I think just my relationship to like races and traveling for races has changed a little bit in that I'm like well you know I could run a slow 5k at home. Like, I don't, <laughs> um, you know, like I kind of like, if I want to do something, I want it to be at the end of something that I've actually trained for and I'm prepared for, not necessarily like I always do sort of like the local fun runs. Like anything up at the Gold Coast is good. That's easy to get to. And I wouldn't feel like I would need to be like, you know, any kind of fitness to do something that yeah. was local to me. Yeah. But if I was going to sort of like invest the time and effort into going to a race that was further afield, I'd yeah. want to be fully prepared and fully trained and yeah. like ready to kind of like yeah. do something fun. And well, it comes back to do you have that capacity at the moment to get yourself into that position where you're really going to feel like you're getting your money's worth, going to, you know, yeah. enjoy yourself or... You know, it's not going to feel like a chore because you've trained enough that, you know, that it's not going to feel horrible and hard and whatnot. And, like, I don't know that I, I don't, yeah, I'm still, the jury's out. Like, I certainly don't have capacity to do anything that requires a, you know, any more mental capacity than what I'm, you know, what I'm currently doing. And it's, um, so many hard things. We've said it so many times before, haven't we? Like, yeah. Pick your heart. <laughs> you know, sometimes your heart is more fun than other times. Like yeah. sometimes you want to go, oh, like I want my running to be the hard thing because that yeah. is a significantly more fun hard thing, thing, hard hard thing, thing than, than other hard Like things. the parenting yeah. hard thing yeah. or the work hard thing. Yeah. But you've still only got like 
Yes. There's a limited amount that the bucket can hold, right? Yeah. And you've got to start saying, like, no to stuff to make, like, space for other stuff. Like, it just, you know, like, it's it's just not, like, it's just not sustainable otherwise. And it's, you know, and, like, people always, like, get a little pale when I list off. They're like, what do you do? Yeah. And when I go, well... I work four days, and then I have a business, and then I have two children, and then I have uni, and they're like, oh. Like, you see, like, it's once you add on the, like, the other stuff, they're like, eh, that's a lot. It's not all. Yeah, uh, that's, but, that's, but that's okay. And then you say uni, and they're like, yeah. that's really yeah. gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, it's, and it is one of those things where, because I've always had like a pretty full plate, I'm kind of used to it. But, um, <laughs> but is but, that a good thing? <laughs> but it's also like it is like giving up other things. Like yeah. it is a situation where I will rarely, like when I am doing all of those things well, like I can kind of like skip on a couple of things and not do them as well and, you know, make room for something else but we're not doing all of those things well like i don't watch tv yeah i don't read books that aren't like uni readings yeah um and i don't really like do like social stuff like through the week or on the weekend because like i need all of that time and it's kind of like being real with yourself and looking at that and going okay is this actually what I want my life to look like? Because the reality is with the new degree, it's now a four-year degree, which makes it an eight- to ten-year part-time degree, depending on how you're travelling. Yeah. I guess what I've done, uh, two years now. Yeah. So I have, like, six-ish years to go, hopefully, yeah. uh, which I'm... Fine with the amount of time because the way I figure it, that will be, that will take me up until when, if Arlo decides to go all the way through to year 12, yeah. Arlo will be finishing when I'm finishing. Yeah. And that to me then opens up the kind of things a little bit more that I would do after graduating because I'm not as locked into being yeah. like living in one place. Yeah. Like I could go off and do like some like, post grad thing in another country if I felt like it because they they'd be old enough and everything like that. So that that time doesn't bother me. But you do have to look at it and go like you're not like smashing out a uh, like a corpse in here. Um you this is your life for six to eight years depending on how fast or slow yeah. you wanna you wanna do this. So it has to be Yeah. And so you have to just, be able you don't to, just have to be able to survive the no. next 12 months if you know some people might do their masters in 12 months yeah. or whatever and it's like well you know or grad dip or something like that you just but you have to actually live that life for the next six years don't you yeah and not and not fall into a heap after the you know you try and do it in two years because you do have a job and you do have a family and you do have your own mental health to look after as well yeah so it's sort of like you could I, kind of got to look at it and like be like really realistic about okay like this is the amount of time it takes making this choice means I'm actually in effect making all of these other choices and you know like what are the things that like I'm sort of like enjoying and like what am I like resisting doing you know like what does that mean you know, like just and and as the other life things come up, like potentially wanting to renovate the house, <laughs> you know, that's got to come from somewhere too. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely definitely on board with like hiring a project manager for that. I'm like, that's a lot of stress. I just need somebody else to do yeah. that. I don't have the time. Josh doesn't have the time. You know, like it's just not um, and just dealing with one person and having somebody who actually has a, a design vision instead of, like, a vague thing of, like, me being in, like, a, a hotel room. I like that shower. 
Yeah, you know, like that's about the extent of my design brain. Um, it's a nice shower head. It was a nice like shower that. head. Really yeah, I like that. <laughs> but listen, we've got to get to the hard hitting questions here. Oh, we do. Uh, what we, like, it was, is it cake or pastry? Pastry versus cake. Well, yes, it depends. I have to when say, say it depends. pastry, do they mean savoury and sweet no, pastry? I think, or is it just sweet pastry? I think Joe means a sweet pastry. But see, I can make a cake at home. That's true. So that makes me want to say pastry. I would tend to go with. I think that there's a lot more variety within the pastry than there is within the cake. And I also feel a lot more confident. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a nice Danish. I'll have that with my coffee as opposed to going, I'll just get, like, some carrot cake to go. Yeah, it's much more affordable. Yeah, I feel like the pastry is the busy person's cake. Yes, that's all. It's, it's a, yeah. We had the most, but Joe, Joe took me to Pembroke Patisserie when I was over there visiting and they had this cardamom bun and it was like a, oh, it was amazing. It was all sorts of chewy and crunchy and pastry-ish and messy and it survived a five-kilometre walk in the back of my pack, which... Shouts out to its robustness. <laughs> it stood the test of, uh, of the, the, the trail pack. But, um, yeah, so I think um, there's some nice, look, I'm not going to lie, there's some nice cakes out there. Yeah, but, uh, but, like, yeah, I think pastry. I've given a lot of thought. It's a considered answer. And I'm going to go with pastry. <laughs> I really do love savoury pastry as well. So if it does include both savoury and sweet and you've just got cake on the other side. I've always like you got like all the that oh, like spanakopita. Oh amazing. Like, yeah. Um my Break. mom my mum does this like um caramelized onion and um like olive and feather tart thing which is oh, um, okay. that's what she's making. I said that you're making that for Christmas. And she's like oh, the kids like that. I'm like, no, I like that. <laughs> I'm making, I'm making, I like making kids chicken nuggets. <laughs> dinosaur chicken nuggets? Yeah, probably dinosaur chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's a super fancy for Christmas. And what, what, what? there were some other questions in there. Yeah, too. Okay. So there was, um, there was, I think that Beck wanted to know about how do we feel about beginning again. Yeah. Mixed, mixed feelings. <laughs> um, um, I can't say I'm excited to begin again, but also I'm trying not to frame it as beginning again. I'm trying to frame it as, I don't know. Um, you never really, but really beginning again. I'm not you've where got, I was when I started. You've got all of the knowledge of everything yeah. you've done. Before. But at the same time, I do remember acutely how hard it was to not just start but to keep going when it was not easy yeah and it was hard and you knew it was going to be hard and yet you did it anyway so i feel um i feel a little bit overwhelmed about you know starting running again but uh it's a little bit confronting i guess as well i've been I've had a lot of reasons over the last seven months of not running. You know, I sprained my ankle twice in four weeks and the second time quite badly. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, you know, you sort of get out of the habit of things and other things take over that space and whatnot. But there was a lot of – so there's a lot of fear involved, I guess, as well. There's, like, I'm, I'm – frightened of hurting myself again. I'm, I've got no confidence in my capacity to run on a trail at the moment. Um, I concentrate like crazy walking on a trail um, and I cannot, at the moment, I can't even think about making the transition from running on the road to running on a trail. That's a long way away, but in the meantime, I can certainly hike on trails and walk yeah. on trails. But 
um, I'll worry about the running first, and then I'll worry about the other bit. Like, it could be a tough transitioning that back to trails later. It could be a tough time of year to like oh, to start running again. Yeah. It's hot. <laughs> it's getting quite gross. But it's also it does the fact that it's light in the morning takes at least one, if not two, excuses out immediately. The I don't know where my head torture is or is it charged. Those two things don't count because it's daylight from a, probably about quarter past five in the morning at the moment. We're, you know, Melbourne. So, um, and it's not hot enough yet, certainly not where I am, to be 20 degrees at 5 a.m. That'll come yeah. probably. But um, so I'm trying to focus on the things that I enjoy about it, which is being outside and um, having that be the way that I start my day a few days a week. Um, knowing that the dog gets a real kick out of it is another reason to do it, that she tippy loves it. Um, <laughs> there's the, um, just got tutored by the yoga teacher overtaking us on the highway. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, yeah, like it's, um, I'm just trying to, you know, remind myself that, yeah, I can do hard things and it will only be hard for a little while. Yeah. It will not be hard for the next 12 months or two years. It will be hard for a short period of time and then it will get easier. And I can then make a choice about how hard I want it to be. Do I yeah. want to just keep it as, you know, as I had originally intended eight years ago when I first started running was three times a week, 30 minutes each. I just, that's all I want to do. <laughs> so, you know, I can, I can set my own boundaries around what my heart will look like once I've done, you know, once I've done this little first, this first bit. Um, but it has taken a bit of, I don't know, a fair bit of introspection and reflection about, you know, what was stopping me and what was holding me back and um, why wasn't I, what did I need to push me in the right direction? Um, so I think I just had a very, very well-timed trip to see Joe, and I think, you know, being around other people who are passionate about that thing that you, you know, that I was passionate about can help rekindle that fire. Yeah. Well, you can't find anyone more passionate than Joe. No. Oh, gosh, no. No, no. <laughs> no. And, and it's, um, and also making plans for the future, you know, sitting around reminiscing about going to Chamonix and then, you know, going around Mont Blanc and all this sort of stuff and, you know, making plans for the future and, um, you know, being in a place like Wanaka where literally the outdoors is, is sort of beckoning to you and saying, why are you still inside? <laughs> Come and join me, you know. Like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so enticing and it's so, um, you know, it just makes you want to get out there and do things. And so that makes me want to go back next time and be fitter and yeah. stronger and actually able to go for a run or um I'll go for a hike that doesn't leave me feeling completely <laughs> destroyed the next day. <laughs> and it was only 16 kilometres. You know, like, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm incredibly proud of climbing that mountain. And it was a metaphorical and literal mountain. But um, but it also, it, like, doesn't take much with something that you're not used to. Like, even though the yoga we did was really restful. Very gentle. Yeah. I was like, it's sore today. <laughs> yes. I like combination yeah. of like our walks or that and, you know, like me not having done much. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And so, yeah, like it doesn't, doesn't take, um, take much. It definitely for, you know, like you can just see that hiking fitness in people. Like when we go on our Friday run, when we do the hill run, there's us. And then there's Tanya, yep. the mountain goat, yep. who is just, there's a, like a big kind of like 700 metre sort of like incline, uh, which if we're feeling sprightly, we might run up, but a lot of the time we run high. Yep. Uh, and 
even when we're hiking, she's like, it's like meters and meters in front of us. It's like, look at that. It's amazing. See, and it's just yeah. all of that trail yeah. experience and all of that work that she does and yeah. being so consistent with her yeah. running and, you know, yeah. like all of that comes together. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it does make a big difference then to like what types of hikes you can go on then, you know, how yeah. far you can go. Yeah, and we're trying, you know, we're looking at, sitting at the top of this mountain the other day, you know, Joe was like, oh, we could go down there, we could go down here, and, you know, it's like, oh, we could fast pack that, and it's like, oh, you know, yeah, like, I need to, I want to get back, I very much want to get back to the point where I can go, yep, we could do 50k in whatever days, carrying a full pack, you yeah. know, carrying tents and food and whatnot, or, you know, we could do 50k in a day, you know, fast packing, you know, a tent, whatever, you know, I really, I want to get back to I desperately want to get back to that part of me that was fit enough and mentally strong enough mm-hmm. to do that as well. Because I just, I can't see that person in myself at the moment. Like, I can't see, I, there's a real, you know, that's what I used to do. But I really, I feel that there's a big disconnect at the moment. And I, I need to, and it's not just a gap, it's a chasm. I need to just start slowly, start working on building a bridge, you know. Yeah, and it, it is like like that, you know. It's like any time, you know, like I know because I look at my time hop and I see things that I did like one, two, three years ago um, and I want to look at myself as like a picture of me like on a grass track. Barefoot. <laughs> Um, yeah. Or, you know, like doing these, you know, like harder sessions or like getting up super early to get it done yeah. or like doing all of the like strength stuff. And now I'm like, uh, yeah, can't be bothered today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I've got it. And if I want that other thing, then my identity has to be a person who does want to do it today. And it's sort of like making that thing of like, if that's what I want, then that's where I have to be. So how do I get, like, this slightly different version of myself and, yeah. you know, and go, okay, yeah. like, um, how is, and, you know, and again, like, regardless of whether it's running or strength for me, like, my big stumbling, like, if the, if I had everybody in the garage, I would be <laughs> a lot more likely yeah. to go in there. But then it's... You've got to work around that. Like, either I get in the garage. Yeah. Um, but as with most house projects, the problem with that is I need to get the new doors in the garage first because that will impact on where the aircon goes. Yes. Slippery slides. It's, it's really a straight line between what, you, what you've got at the end. You've still got to, you know, there's yeah. always other things that need to come into um, place. But, you know, like either I go, okay, well then, like maybe, like I do, I like go to the, you know, sort of like gym and do some of my strength there, or, you know, like just it just shift up my schedule and so that I'm doing like the strength stuff in the morning when it's not. When it's not hot. When it's not hot or, you know, like what, whatever it whatever it is, like there's, there's a pathway there, but it is just, it doesn't take much to sort of shift your identity from someone who like does all of those little things consistently well and somebody who goes, well, I can't really be bothered. I'm just, gonna, just watch something good on Netflix. Today I'll just watch instead. Netflix and have like this really delicious homemade pizza. I just made, yeah. Which, you know, like it's not, the, the pizza thing's not mutually exclusive. Like, obviously, I could yeah. still have the pizza. But um, but it is sort of like making that connection. Like, it's not going to – I'm not going to magically one day wake up with all of that motivation to do all of those things. It's going to be like – I've it's a choice a, that you make. Yeah, I've got to sort time. of like shift myself and like find a go, okay, like if I did everything, that's probably too overwhelming, but i got to start. But you can make, like, and I try to look at it as though making one little change. Yeah, exactly. Like what little tiny change can I make this week that's going to, you know, today, that's right now, well, I can actually get out of bed and go for my walk. Yeah. Or I could get out of bed and go for my run. 
running used to be something that I could rely on, that I was competent and good at, yeah. and was would be like the strong point in like whatever I was doing exercise wise. And now, like, oh, how many days can we call it a week? Like, I can still, still you can still run, <laughs> but um, and I would still not consider it a weak point, like. Uh, like when I was doing, you know, like because coming back after COVID, I did a lot of walk running, yep. not necessarily on set intervals. I just did it off my heart rate. And as soon yep. as my heart rate went over 140, I started walking. Yep. And you know when you're not fit because I was so relieved when it would go over 140. <laughs> think, crap, I get to walk now. <laughs> Instead of, damn it. <laughs> um, and, but comparatively, like it's nowhere near like, like what my yeah. running fitness would normally be yeah. and that's like that is like a tough sort of pill to, yeah, to, a, to swallow is, and I just tend to just in my mind I've sort of like blacked out like any sort of like PBs or results that I've had pre-COVID and it's just like it's just different you know like it's not that I would never like get back there I think that I and I was just reading this thing about a lady who's 49 who read the New York Marathon is faster than when she was 35. And I'm like, this is wow. exactly the kind of content I That's need to exactly make. We need to streaming. saturate our <laughs> Instagram feed with um, rock stars like her. And um, all on, you know, like doing sort of uh, like three runs a week. Yeah. You know, like I yeah. think three runs during the week and maybe like one on the weekend. Yeah. But, um, has a full-time job, has yeah. young children, wow. youngish children, yeah. I think. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, it, it is, I think it's just in part allowing yourself to be a beginner. And it's hard. Like it's easier said than done, oh, isn't yeah. it? It's like it's really fucking hard to just say, mm-hmm. well, this is where I am. So this is where I start instead of saying, well, I used to be capable of this and I used to be capable of that. And, well, I can't do that. Like there's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's confronting. It is really confronting and you kind of just. And you're kind of like faced with all of the, all of way. the sort of decision that you have made yeah. up until this point that has yeah. led you here. And some of them are unavoidable. It's like the sort of like one of those things where I, I've read before, like, saying you know like never sort of like judge yourself for what you had to do to get to from point a to point b which i think is very it's true very in in this in this case but you know like i also do look at it go like oh you know like there are choices that i made that were like that that were just about like getting by and there are other things where i'm like yeah, like I'm <laughs> now like faced with all of the like the more like borderline yeah. choices yeah. that I made where I was like, oh, was that I can just do that next week? Yeah, you know, and then was it just the easier choice. Yeah, and then I'm like a week, not behind, but I could be a week ahead. Yeah, you know, like you just I'm just delaying yeah. that sort of like start point yeah. for something that tough bit that I'm going to have to get through at some yeah. point. It's like you are going to, at some point, you're going to have to push through that bit where yeah. you go, oh, this seems a bit hard yeah. and keep yeah. going. And also, like, I mean, I I was incredibly fortunate. I had a very well-timed week of hand-holding by Joe, And, you know, I didn't want to go all the way over there, just sit around on her couch and go, yeah, no, I can't, I can't hike, I can't walk, I can't do this, I can't do that. So, you know, like, and it's a very inspiring place to spend time. Yeah. You know, even if you were not an outdoorsy sort of person, you might still like to take a few deep breaths in the mountain yeah. air. <laughs> um, but it is also like, you know, like when I got back and I sort of had decided that, yes, I was going to do my first run back and I, um, and I sort of swallowed my pride and instead of having it being something that I should feel like I could do by myself, I said to my friend Emily to, you know, I'm going to do my first run back tomorrow and it would be awesome if you would, you know, if you're free, I'd love the company because it feels a bit scary, to be mm. honest. Um, and, you know, and she was 
she didn't, you know, she didn't make me feel bad about the fact that I was doing 30 second intervals or, you know, that there was an awful lot of walking or whatever. Like she, none of that. She just, um, you know, it was just like old times, except there was a lot more walking and a lot less running, but just yeah. as much talking, you know, yeah. and laughing and whatever. And, and I, you know, um, and I think it's admitting that you don't have to, you don't have to do things by yourself, yeah. you know, that yes, maybe I did do it by myself once upon a time, but I don't have, I have a network now and I have a support group around me, I guess. And I'm really lucky that I've got somebody who lives in the same town as me who, you know, um, who wants to see me get back to, you know, enjoying running again as well, or is happy to slow down and run at my pace to, you know, to be able to encourage me along or whatever and not make me feel bad about it at all. You know, just like, well, you know, her parting words were, well, let me know when you're going next mm. and I'll see if I can join you again. And it's, you know, um, it, yeah, it's sort of, um, it was, yeah, it was hard to sort of reach out and just sort of admit that I needed help. Um, but at the same time, I'm just like, I'm so glad I did because now I'm like, you know, now I know I can do it, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and then I went and did it twice more by myself during the week, you know, um, and it, yeah. And it's, um, and now that I've sort of proven to myself that I can do three runs that maybe I might, you know, pull my big girl pants on and actually follow a running plan (laughs) to actually, you know, plug in one of the learn to run things into final surge or something and, and actually put some structure to it. Um, so, you know, so that I've actually, you know, approaching this in a, in a less haphazard way than just what do I feel like doing today? (laughs) Because sometimes that's an awesome way to go about it. And sometimes it's a really, um, self-restricting way of going about things because you can't get out of your own way sometimes. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you just got to sometimes take, you take, take your little running ego, go like, go over here, have, yeah, a, have, just a, go have a nap. Sit over here while oh, I, 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 I might need you later, <laughs> but for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we can do part two of this tomorrow in the car when we drive <laughs> yeah. to um, Canberra. Excellent. All right. Thank you for listening to the podcast and uh, the next episode will be part two. But as always, any, uh, any questions or requests, just send them through to me.